Hello, my great and wonderful people. How on a day today? I hope all of on a day well. Today, we get a few videos for our table. We're going to one quickly review to you concerning the things we're going to if they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. Just as you don't already see one right from the introduction, how EBC APC they scatter everywhere for their own meeting for National Assembly. Yes. This one are the kind of people when it be say all of now, they glamour for to become the leaders for various places come 2023. Well, they leave you to watch the full disgrace when it be say they bring upon their server for this very event. And after that very one, we also get another video when we say with the receiver from Omoyele Showere, when it be the presidential candidate of AAC, when it also meet African Action Congress. I beg they patient with us. And before we go on to the review, the full video, we want to quickly beg you for one favor. I beg help us to like this video because not the only one will be say YouTube and Facebook will fit help us recommend this video to each and every one of us all over the world. The more this video get likes, the more that they recommend them to people. Now their own policy now it be that very one. Thank you so much for your support. All right, I'll first of all leave you to watch this disgrace going to be say APC bring upon themselves before I will bring you the one of Omoyole show. <laughs> All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say all of them don't see them one after the other. Yes. Now, what did they happen? Now, it be that very one. Now, the people, when they say Una send a message, now it be that. To bring peace to Una, now it be that. People, when they say they never feel find peace within their cells, tell me whether or not they want to bring peace to you. Those are people, when they say they're supposed to go to that chamber to go discuss how your peace will they come about. Then, the, if they feel engage themselves with this kind of attitude, tell me where the peace for you and your children will for come. All right, I will leave you to share your own opinion concerning that very matter with us on the comment section. We don't really get much time like that. Even as we leave you to watch this other video, when it be said with the receipt from Omoyele Showere, I beg, take your time to watch this video. This video long a little bit. This man gets a lot of things going to be said in review from this very video. Remember, this man is still the presidential candidate of AAC when he also met Africa Action Congress. We'll come back for the conclusion. Other presidential candidates will not arrive until 4 p.m. So I use that opportunity to go to another event only to hear that uh, the event has kicked off. I I am a Moyele Showere, and um, thank you, thank you very much. And I want to apologize on behalf of the presidential candidates who never attend events like this. Uh, just so that you know, those of us who are attending events, we are not doing it because we don't have anything to do. It is because we respect you enormously to understand that if we are going to build or rebuild Nigeria, first and foremost, you need architects. That's the most important thing. Before you start dealing with builders, real estate people, and politicians, the problem with Nigeria is that we are building Nigeria not with architects, but with politicians. And that is why you see this country the way it is today. I attended the University of Lagos. Is anybody from the University of Lagos here? Yeah, Thank you very much. And I must acknowledge one architect who was also a river when we were in school. His name is uh, Wilson Abonta. Wilson Abonta. If I had known, if I had known that uh, I would spend six years instead of four years studying geography at university, I would have even gone for architecture. Yes, because 
When we arrived at the University of Lagos, we met guys who were studying architects who had been there before my father was born. They said they would never allow them to graduate. I'm serious. I'm exaggerating, but serious. A lot of uh, guys that we met at Real Life had been there for almost seven years for studying architecture. Um, yes, but what is important to me today is to reach out to you. Uh, I'm not here with any scripts. To let us understand that our country, Nigeria, has been bastardized almost completely. Bastardized to the point that almost every professional has left Nigeria. I was uh, with an NMA representative, Nigeria Medical Association, said 8,000 doctors have left. I went to ICANN events, they said several accountants have left. I attended several of these uh, professional organizations annual events and they tell me that when they had it the year before there were more people in the hall that are there now because those who have not left are processing their documents to leave nigeria that's the reality and the reason they are leaving nigeria is that nigeria has been badly badly mismanaged over the years when i was coming here i reached out to a team that i work with that what do you tell architects about the future? And the first response we get is ask them how many of them will still be around by 2023 so that you know how many people you are planning the future with. It is because every other person, every other person wants Nigeria and every other country that is developing rapidly in the world really want Nigerians to come to their country. But every other leader that's been running Nigeria, including the ones now, don't want Nigerians, I mean Nigerians, to be in Nigeria anymore. Reason I say so is that you can't have professionals that don't give advice, or when they give advice, you don't accept them and you want your country to be okay. I was looking at um, some federal ministries in Nigeria and discovered that some agencies of government, some departments of government, do not have professionals in that sector managing them. I think somebody was telling me in the health sector, the person who is the Minister of State for Health is a lawyer. Is, there, is it possible that there is no doctor enough in Nigeria to be a Minister of State for Health or a pharmacist? I don't know if there is still a Minister of Housing in Nigeria. Uh, if I don't know, please don't say she already didn't know what's happening in Nigeria. I've been locked up for so long, I don't remember what's going on in Nigeria. But I'll be surprised to find out that our Minister of Housing, if there's still a Minister of Housing, is an architect, is a lawyer. That shows to you that the President of Nigeria is also today not a professional who should be handling any country in the world. And we are getting to that point. Don't be afraid that we won't have to go to jail. You just listen to me. Yes. So we are getting to a point where we must decide that people who are not fit, particularly in this coming election, people who are not fit to run a WhatsApp group is not accidentally made the president of Nigeria in 2023. And I'm saying this categorically. As a presidential candidate, that I've seen so many presidential candidates, about 18 of us, and I've interacted with a number of them, both the ones who claim to be frontline presidential candidates, and I can tell you categorically, especially the first so called frontline presidential candidates, a majority of them are not fit to run anywhere in the world. They are not fit to run Liberia. They are not fit to run Syria alone. Talkless of Nigeria. And I've said this in front of them. It is part of the reason why they have refused to engage in debates with people like me. They have been running around all the organizations doing town hall meetings and debates. When they invite them, they will refuse to come. Because we are staying there, ready to challenge them. That what do you have for the Nigerian people? Besides the fact that you are old and we don't know your age. Yes. 
What do you have for the Nigerian people besides the fact that you went to school but we don't know your classmates? What do you have for the Nigerian people besides the fact that you are senile but you don't want to admit it? What do you have for the Nigerian people besides the fact that you've had a chance to run a state or a country before but you have nothing to show for it? Those are the challenging things that made them to be running away from events like this. They are also afraid to confront you guys who are professionals, who have simple but professional questions about what they intend to do to fix Nigeria. You have all heard that Nigeria, when we started hearing about Nigeria, was about development plans. Every 10, 10 years, there's a development plan. When they were tired of giving us development plans, they started introducing visions. And the last time we heard about the vision was vision 2010. But the question is that anybody who is an eye doctor knows that vision 2010 is not the correct vision. The correct vision is vision 2020. So they introduced vision 2020. We have passed that vision period now and Nigeria is still incorrectly governed. So I'm standing in front of you, begging and appealing to you that we should put all kinds of partisan sentiments aside, because I hear that from a lot of people. You can't win this election, the old parties have structures. No structures, it's a lie. The big parties don't have structures. What they have are what we call transactional structures. The structures of rub, your, rub my back, I rub your back is not political structure. The structures that put over 133 million Nigerians in poverty is not political structure. The structure that made Nigeria the poverty capital of the world is not political structure. The structures that made all these leaders that we are complaining about in this country today to be governors, House of Reps, Senators, they are not political structures. They are structures that have changed us. And I'm sure most of you that are sitting here thought that after you left university, you will meet a Nigeria that is working. Some of you thought after you got a job, you will live in Nigeria that is working. But as of today, every one of us are living in misery. Due to insecurity, lack of planning, lack of uh, opportunities for young people, lack of uh, pension, gratuity for those who have overworked their lives. People who retired in Nigeria had to come back to start working again because what they thought they planned for to retire is not in Nigeria they found themselves. So I'm appealing to you, and I'm serious about this, that in electing the next Nigerian president, Please jettison these old antiquated ideas that somehow Nigeria is going to make progress if we use the same parameters we have been using to elect or select our leaders in 2023. Henceforth, do not elect anybody or select anybody on the basis of ethnicity. We have tried it with all the leaders since 1999. The Yoruba people who are here were very happy, not the ones that are here, but at the time, when a Yoruba man was chosen to be president in 1999. Today, they know better. The Niger Delta people were given the opportunity with Jonathan elected. Today, the Niger Delta region knows better because they couldn't even complete the East-West Highway. It's been completely cut off from the rest of Nigeria due to flooding. And the Northerners who were happy in 2015 that their Mary Garcia, Garcia Bubu came to power and everything is all right. You are living the most insecure and miserable life today. So your ethnic consideration for candidacy has not worked for you. Why should we keep doing the same thing all over again knowing that the results that we produce will be the same misery, suffering, hunger, starvation, and disease. That is why 
I am standing in front of you today, having traveled all the way from Abuja, stayed in a hotel overnight just to catch a glimpse of the architects of Nigeria. And I know, as you discuss here about your work, is largely and mostly lamentation. That the country of your dream that you had always wanted to build, you haven't, able, you haven't been able to build it. And those of you who tried to build something in Nigeria, when you look back at those structures that you designed because of bad leaders, bad maintenance culture, corruption, you might even be forced to deny that you are not the one who participated in building those structures. It is true. Because how do you design a building, which is the work of an architect, and when it's time for it to be given out for construction, the worst builder is contracted to do it. Just like our refineries. We had four refineries, and when they wanted to start destroying it, they were using vulcanizers to repair refineries. And then you are wondering why you don't have refineries. It's the same thing that must have happened to those of you who are in this profession, that you have designed, done your best for Nigeria to become Eldorado. But the Nigeria of today that you have is not the one you design. And those of you who design anything at all are too ashamed to even admit it that you are part of the design of several of the uh, structures you have in Nigeria. One other question I was asked when I was coming here was to discuss with you about building collapse. And I said to them, I, I spoke with uh, architect Aduku this morning, who was an architect who was sent to be a minister of state for health. And then they kicked him out when he was complaining too much under Yaradua, he told me. <laughs> yes. Is that it is not the job of the architect to buy materials and build building. You, you, you have already done the design. The fact is that the moment they take the design from you, they will go and give it to the most incompetent person to build. And when you cry out, they come after you. Sometimes they threaten to assassinate you if you are complaining about the conditions of the building material. So that's what makes Nigeria look like your dilemma. Those many of us have a design Nigeria in our heart that will guarantee security, peace, progress, health care, free education, and use Nigeria resources in the interest of Nigeria. In my own case, I have been doing it since 1989 when I got admitted to the University of Lagos. I have spent some 30 years, three decades, fighting for justice in this country. Thinking about the Nigeria of my dream where architects would just be designing wonderful buildings like they have in the United Arab Emirates where we call Dubai today. Where the same crazy, wicked leaders run to whenever they want to have fun. And I've been told that some of those buildings you see, some of the greatest buildings in the world, Nigerians have participated in designing them. But you will never be allowed, no matter how brilliant you are, no matter how sound you are, no matter how intellectually good you are, to do anything right in your country because of the kind of leaders you have. So my question to you is, can we continue like this? No. And if you don't want to continue like this, you must elect one of you. I wanted to use that as a revelation. When I got admitted to the University of Lagos, I was admitted to the Faculty of Environmental Sciences. Yes. And of all the courses there, architecture we used to regard as number one, building as number two, real estate as number four. But the real number one course at that faculty is geography and planning. And that is what I studied at the University of Lagos. If you need a good building, you must talk to a geographer. If you want to plan a country, you must talk to me. If you want anything to work, we must all plan it together. I want to thank you very much for your time, energy, and your desire for a better Nigeria. And I can stand in front of you to guarantee that one of you, one of you, will be the president of the British Republic of Nigeria. So that you can help us design a new country and a new future. Thank you for that to
All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe see all of them don't see that very speech from Omoyele show. They already talk and say the people want to be said they get head, they not get cap. And those who want to be said they get cap, they not get head. Now, so we talk and the person want to be said he gets sense, supposed to use his own wisdom to design what is good from that one of evil. All right. I will leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section, even as we draw the line here. And before we say a final goodbye, one quickly use this medium to appreciate each and every one of you for your time when you stay with us up to this moment. God Almighty will bless you. And also, the one blessed to the help of the share these brokers, your likes, your comments, all of them, we appreciate them. I've been making not forget to help us share this very one as well so that we stay with our brothers and sisters all over the world because we believe in what they say information, not power. And as we do so, God Almighty will bless you. We would like to draw the conclusion of this program. Program here. We'll see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye bye.